in this video I'm going to take you through all of the luring options I'm going to have with me in the Flathead Classic this year. It's only a couple of days away now, I'm getting really excited. And I just want to share with you all of the stuff that I'm going to be taking with me and uh, how I like to rig it. I'll give you some tips on what you can do to get a little bit more out of your lures and help with your hookup rates. But I'm going to go through everything I've got. Small diving lures for trolling and casting, uh, little soft plastics, pre-rigged plastics. I'm going to go through some big surface luring options, some glide baiting and swim baiting options. And I've even just got little weedless plastics for throwing in and around those weeded edges and a couple of other little tricky things that uh, might just change the way that you go fishing next time you're chasing flathead. So we'll start off with the small stuff and then uh, finish with the things that might just change the flathead classic for me this year. And uh, they're the really big lures that can get the really big flathead. So one of the lures that's done really well for me just recently trolling is this Rapala X-Wrap Jack Deep. And you can see the profile on this thing. It gets right down deep into the sand and it's really busy. It's got a really defined shad profile on it and they come in a range of colours. The hooks that come on them are great. They're really hooky and quite strong. I've pulled a, a, an 80 plus flathead on that just a couple of weeks ago trolling around in the shallows. So I'm definitely going to have that with me. There's some old favourites that I've got here that perform really well every year in the Classic. These lively lure micro mullets, these things have just uh, probably one of the go-to lures for so many guys that catch a lot of fish every year in the Classic and troll up their flathead. Um, they're probably the most popular colours that they come in, those three. You can see the little profile on them. A couple of other, other little profiles that I've got which I really like. These Tango Shads, the guys from uh, Wilson and the guys that fish for Zerik in the Classic every year just catch loads and loads of good sized fish and um, a whole heap of pan size flathead on these. And that's what I've heard is that those 40 to 50 centimetre fish tend to win the Classic because they get such good numbers with these lures. So these are the colours that I'm running. I've got like a darker model that I'd probably use at the lower end of the tide or at the end of the run out. And then these little ones here, like the whites, and then like a little IU that's got a silver foil flash in the centre of it. And that's one of my, my all-time favourites. I don't know if you can pick up the hook rash on that, but it's uh, got a bit of hook rash and a fair few battle wounds from catching plenty of fish on the troll. Uh, one of the other things I think is worth paying attention to is some of these lures not sure how much of that you can pick up but some of these lures have got a UV paint in them and even some plastics and I sort of look for that now I think that's a an interesting aspect to lure design and painting lures where they pick up a little UV light I've been told fish can see in UV so uh, having a, a UV finish on some of these lures in parts of the body I think is uh, something worth paying attention to and just on that, some of these scents that people are rubbing onto their plastics and hard bodies and things like that, a lot of them have got UV in them. Especially with these squidgies, the lighter coloured ones I've been told have got more UV in them. So I'll use those. I've also got sack scent here, which I use as well. Um, I've got a double clutch here. And this little crack jack, uh, Pontoon 21. This is a 48 SP. They're the kind of lures that I like to troll. These double clutches are a little bit bigger, but with that small profile, they fly through the air really well and then retrieve super tight action and they're great for flatties as well. So there's some of the smaller lures, um, the hard bodies that I use. A couple of other options in the small bait sort of style of hard body stuff. These Rio, Rio's prawns are Probably like one of their only sort of unique design lures. It's like a resin design prawn and it looks just like a yabby. These things have been great for me for years and they're a very easy lure to fish. I often sort of send people towards Rio's lures on, online to get these if they've got kids that are fishing because you just throw them out and whatever action you bring them in on the way back, they still tend to catch fish. So there's that little Rio's prawn. And while I've got a, a prawn pattern in my hand, I want to show you this too. This MMD prawn, this will catch flathead. It's a little top water lure, but it'll catch absolutely everything. And um, I'm not going to be using it probably in the classic because I think there's a lot of other options I'd go for. But if you're after fish on the flats, including flathead, these things are fantastic and a lot of fun to fish with. There's always a competition between hard bodied lures and soft plastics and which ones catch more at the classic. Um, I reckon I'm going to be end up using soft plastics a little bit more than hard bodies this year going into it as a prediction. 
So I want to show you just some of the ideas around the different ways that you can rig these and the different jig heads you can use. My favourites at the moment are these TT jig heads and the headlock system that they come in. Uh, these are just like a sixth of an ounce and it's a 2.0 size hook. They're super sharp and really catchy. Um, and it's just a traditional style jig head. And then there's these things from Domeki. These tiny little jig heads, these are a 3 16th ounce. They've just got a nice finish on them. There's a lot of the gun guys that go after fish with soft plastics that paint up their jig heads. And I think that's something that can make a difference, especially in super clear water and on the shallows, on super light days, having a good finish to a jig head um, might just make the difference. So I'll show you a couple other pre-ricked models in a sec. But that's something I really like as well. These snake locks, this is like an eighth with a 2.0 hook. These are just fantastic for fishing in and around weed. And it's a weedless hook on there with a swinging weight at the front. And that just allows the bait at the back, the soft plastic, to move really, really well in currents and through the weed and that sort of thing so they don't get snagged up. So I'll probably use this more than anything, I reckon. I'll just give you a look at what they look like. You can see there that it's got like a swinging weight system and then it's got a little headlocks like a little keeper or a chin locks there they're called and that just keeps the elastic or the z-man plastic in place if you don't have um, elastic plastics then what you want to be using to keep your little plastics in place are these little twist locks and you can get them in packs of 50 and 100 and there's a few different sizes i just buy them all so i know which ones i've got you know i'm not going to miss out or get some that are too big they're only a couple of bucks a pack for 100 or 50 but you can pin your plastics using either the twist locks or the chin locks and keep them on longer so you get more out of your fish and um and catch a lot more fish with the same plastic so the other options are to fish with pre-rigged plastics and i'll show you a couple of the options these um Zeric, these are the what are they, the flat shads, they've got like a pre-rigged weedless hook in there with a weight at the bottom and then you might be able to see they've got like, I'll show you, I'll whip it out of the packet so you can see. These things have become really, really popular of late and a lot of guys have been doing really well with them. After flooded, you can see they've got these slits through the belly that just help collapse the bait so they get exposed when the hook... Uh, when the fish grabs the hook, the hook gets exposed and it just helps with your hook up rate. But things like that are pretty popular as well. I really like some of these things that have come out from Storm recently and just the, the finish on that jig head is as good as you're going to get. And they come pre-rigged like that so straight out of the packet you can fish it. And I think these are like the eighth of an ounce. And I, I've always loved white plastics. I think that they just put out such a great profile and, and they're very easy to pick up on the flats and even in dirty water. So as an all-rounder, something like these search baits by 360 GT made by Storm, they might be a really good option for me, this, uh, this classic. The other ones that Storm have brought out, these 360 Coastals, these are the Biscay Shads and they've got a beautiful profile on them, just like a little whiting and they've got whiting colors. And again, they've got like a UV colour through them. I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up in, in direct light, but they've got this UV finish to the head and body, which that profile for a plastic in, I think they're like a little three or four inch, three and a half inch minnow. I'm going to be throwing these around. And they come in a weedless model and then one with the hook exposed. So in open water, in open flats, you want that hook exposed and then through the heavy cover. These have got a twist lock built into the jig head that holds the plastic in place. So they're going to last a, long, a lot longer than something that you sort of rig yourself without a twist lock, for example. So they're 360 Coastal GTs, they're called Biscay Shads, and they've just hit the market. They're in stores now, um, but they haven't been there long, and that's one of the appeals for me, fishing for fish in a classic, in a pressured comp, with something that the fish might not have seen in the, in the months leading up or over the week of the classic. So there's some pre-rigged options. Uh, let me take you through. I've got a whole host of soft plastics that might come out at different stages during the comp. I'll start with some little shrimp patterns that might um, tickle your fancy if you like chasing flathead. I've always got some of these little wrigglers and I think they sort of represent little wrigglers, kind of represent a little shrimp maybe, um, but definitely these snatch bite shrimp by Magbite. These are one of my favorite new lures that have come out in the last few years that um, have got just a lot of legs, a lot of action. They've got, you might be able to see the glow there with the UV 
through them. And I've caught bass skipping, skipping these things into cover for bass. I reckon jacks will take them, but definitely flatted as well. And I'll rig that with one of those um, snake block systems. Uh, what else have I got here? These storm little shrimp patterns. They're another one with a tiny little profile and I'll be able to rig them weedless. They're pretty much made for it and they're a much smaller profile than a lot of the shrimp patterns that you'll get. Another shrimp pattern is this molting shrimp. This is like a three inch and it's from Gulp. So they've got this really smelly scent that they sort of swim in until they come out of the packet. And uh, they're dynamite. They come in a couple of different sizes. I like the three inch and the two inch. And uh, you can rig them. I sort of tend to rig them with an exposed hook and then fish them fairly slowly through the water. But um, they can get picked about and sort of torn up. So you probably, if you're going to fish with them in a classic or if you go away for a weekend, you want a couple of packs of them because everything grabs onto them and wants a bite of them. So I'll have them with me as well. The places where I like to use those little shrimp patterns is in, a, in around those really quiet muddy sections of mangrove lined banks where it's a really small creek and you want a little finesse bait to get in there and just chug along the bottom or little hops along the shallows. That's where you're gonna see the shrimp feeding and moving. That's where you wanna use a little shrimp pattern. Out in the main part of the system, you wanna be using like, I reckon, more shad style and mullet style patterns, maybe like a whiting presentation. So I'll take you through some of those now and give you a look at some of the fish pattern plastics that I've got for the classic. I've got some really interesting new style or new profile swimming sort of fish patterns with these plastics. Take a look at these Eastfield perch. These things, this is called the wingman perch, that color, I really like that. I'm gonna use it for jacks as well this year, but it's got that paddle tail on the back, a beautiful profile, nice presence with that eye, and I reckon the UV light that comes out of these things, and I've tested these in the last week or so, you can't quite, you might not be able to see that, but they've come up a really light green color. So I'm gonna be throwing them around, and I reckon with like an exposed hook, I'll be using those ones on like an eighth or a sixth. So just a really slow moving shad style plastic. These are an old favorite of mine from when I was a teenager. And uh, I caught a fair few flathead on these things. These are the squidgy fish in the silver fox color. And they've got a really small profile, really tiny. They've got ribbing down through the base of the body which shows out a little bit more of a vibe. And then that tiny little paddle tail on the back. And you'll see as well, these have got like a distress gill, like a hot chin and in the 70 mil, they come in heaps of different sizes, but in the 70 and the 100, I really like these squidgy fish. They've been around forever, but they're still a really good producer on flathead for me. Um, a couple of the others that, these things these things tear up a little bit, but boy, are they good. These little Kitech Easy Shiners. This is the Holtz Herring pattern. These things are just dynamite. They're such a small profile. If the fishing gets really hard, which I'm pretty sure it's going to in those last couple of days, I reckon these little things are going to do the trick. They're a really subtle moving thing. If it's really, really quiet and the fishing gets tough, I always go for these, even with bass. So bass and flathead, um, they love these things. They're the Kitech Easy Shiners. The little profile on these Damiki armor shads, this is something that I really like. It looks just like a little bait fish that you might see going nuts across the flats, especially early morning, and throwing one of these either unweighted or just super lightly weighted, and uh, that's why I've got them in. And that'll be like, on a, again, a real glass out conditions where there's a lot of light penetration. I think these have got a great profile and that color especially, I really like that. It's a really natural IU color. Now, when the tide recedes and it gets really dirty, especially in those muddy sections, you want things that have got a little bit more of a color presence and a profile to them. So things like these little shad style patterns from Storm. These are 360 GT Coastal little shad patterns. You might have seen in the last video that I did on my tactics for chasing flathead in the classic, I was using some of these diesel minnows and these things in this, I think that's calico candy, that color. They're super stretchy, they'll last all day, one packet, and uh, they're just a fantastic approach, especially where there's a lot of weed or that muddy stuff, and you can throw it in and let the tide just move it. Because it's a floating plastic, it sits up on one of those little jig systems that I was talking about, these snake lock systems with these little diesel minnows. They're the perfect recipe, I reckon, in dirty water where there's water movement and tidal flow or wind pushing the water around in the shallows. So I'll be using those for sure. Um, there's those wrigglers again. 
and recently they've sort of got these ultraviolet sort of um, enhanced colors with bio salt sense to them as well so they they've been around forever I've always liked these little three inch these little watermelon pearl they are just like a tiny little straight bait fish pattern by gulp and they've just got two little tails on the end and they just move there's barely any action to them but boy do they catch fish I've caught absolutely everything on these again they get chewed up real easy but um, yeah if you're after good numbers of the smaller fish these things are the go something you might not have seen these are by tricky slewers yeah and I've bought these bought these just recently these represent like a little bait fish with a shad tail that's really busy and it represents a lure that I was using years ago that I can't get my hands on anymore that I did really really well on so I saw these in a post um, Corey posted some barra that he caught on these and I reckon they're going to do the trick on flathead as well so you can rig them like in, using a weedless system or just just a regular jig head like an eighth of a jig eight ounce jig head these things with their busy tail and that rib side I've caught plenty of flathead with that style of plastic so I'm gonna have those with me as well we're still going there's more in my there's gonna be more in my boat when I'm out on the on the classic than I can definitely than I can fish with over the week but uh, it's just good I think to have all of the options at your disposal and depending on the conditions the tidal movement wind and visibility um, what they're feeding on whether it's shrimp or small bait fish uh, or how active they are that's that's what sort of comes into it so I was just talking to a mate of mine that was like Johnny why are you sharing some of your secrets before the classic and for me really if I if it gets down to it the secret really isn't in what I'm using it's more around what's going on on the water and how are the fish presenting how are they feeding how are they taking the baits that dictates the choices and the decisions behind how I go about my craft fishing so um, that's why I'm happy to share with with you all of the stuff that I like to use and hopefully that's going to put you on some fish as well um, so there's no real secrets with me but um, yeah so if you've got any questions on the stuff that I've been using or how I like to use it you're more than well just chuck a comment in the section below and I'll get back to you maybe not in the next day or so while I'm out on the water but I'll definitely get back to you with my ideas on that um, all right so what we'll get back into it I've got some really big baits now that I reckon are potentially the ones that are going to catch the biggest fish for me this week and there's some soft plastic some glide baits some surface baits and some diving lures that I think come into that real big bait category that catch those really really big fish and that's what I'm going to be targeting hopefully for the whole time we're out on the water all right these slap sticks by Silstar they come in a nine inch and this one here I think is like just a six inch I love the bigger one I think with a bigger presence in the water you're much more likely to get those really big fish out of their out of their lies and taking some of those big baits so these nine inch slap sticks rigged with some of these wide gap hooks by VMC these are a strategic um, heavy duty wide gap hook I just love rigging them with those at the front it's like a weedless presentation with a treble stinger at the back and they're the sizes it's a 7.0 weedless hook and then a size 6 2x strong owner at the back with 20 pound fluorocarbon joining of about 10 centimeters that just gives the bait a bit more balance you've got the weedless hook up the front and then towards the tail you put the treble and my last video I did on tactics for, for flathead in the classic I go through how I've rigged that um, and in my DVD giant flathead in the shallows that's a uh, online downloadable full-length film or a DVD I go into heaps of detail about how to fish it so if you haven't seen that yet make sure you get your hands on that and take a look because these things are just dynamite and I think I'll probably spend more time throwing this in the classic than any any other lure um, a close second might be a weedless plastic just a smaller version but these things for sure are probably my go-to at the moment Chris Metcalf made them famous with some giants and some really big scores in classics in years gone by and uh, they're standing the test of time these things and they're a lot of fun to fish so no sinkers and no weights no heavy jigs on these completely unweighted and they're still light enough to throw at distance so I'll use a sort of like a seven foot seven foot six rod and that'll get the distance with these things another option are these storm sand eels and they're just you can get these in like a 30 centimeter this is i think the 8 inch version but they come in like a 12 as well 
and I haven't fished these as much, but I've just heard really good things about them. Um, they're a much smaller bait, but maybe in and around the mangroves, like as a mangrove worm or some sort of imitation like that, they might be worth using. So I've got a couple of different colours in these, and this is like a silver pearl or a silver flash, and there's a glow to them, and then I've got a brown one as well. All right, the big baits for fishing out in open water. I want to take you through some of my favourites. The biggest flathead I've ever taken was taken on a Lucky Craft Real IU glide bait, and these things are dynamite. Glide baits in general for big flathead um, are, are a real game changer for me. This is the, the profile of the Real IU glide bait. It's a Lucky Craft lure that's a fairly tightly held glide bait, you can see that, and that gives it a fairly tight retrieve back to the boat. I'll go into a lot of detail in uh, my DVD on how to fish these things, and there's action there of catching big 90s and things like that on them, but essentially the way that I like to fish this is super slow to give the big fish time to come up and grab it. So these glide baits fished with fairly heavy hooks just to keep it balanced. It's a slow floating glide bait, and so I'm fishing it over about three feet of water, it looks just like a whiting, and that's its appeal. Some other options that I'm definitely gonna be throwing around in the classic, these Affinity Series by Zerek. You can see a beautiful profile there. This is a double jointed, so it's like a swim bait, and it's got a soft tail with a beautiful finish to it. You can see that there, but the benefit of this is that it's got uh, interchangeable weights that sit perfectly along the profile of the bait. So it's not like running a big heavy chin weight, um, these things you can screw these out you know in under 30 seconds you're either running a heavy weight and middle size weight or unweighted and at unweighted they just sit up on the surface beautifully and the, the big flathead have got no trouble coming up to smash these so the Zerek Affinity series these things are just dynamite so I'll be fishing those as well I've got a white one and this color are probably my favorites there's another one that comes with like a yellow spot on the side and I really like that one too um, I've got this one, this is a homemade one by my mate Alex and this is a more punchy one, it puts out a bit bigger of a profile, moves a bit more water so I'll use this in a little bit more dirty water and um, this is like an uh, imitation of a Roman made glide bait, it's a little bit more open, you can see that it falls out a little bit more so you've got to fish it a bit slower but it sort of turns around on itself and sits there right in their face and I've seen action on this one particularly already but um, there's some other options that I love to use. This is by Blair Chilton. This is one of his glide baits. You can see how tight that is, but the big bullish head on it, it means it moves a hell of a lot of water and that beautiful mullet profile, I think, is, um, is just what the big fuddies love. So there's a couple of those. A smaller, more modest approach are these S Wavers by River to Sea. And they've got a great profile on them and a great finish, internal, uh, internal holographic foil. Um, these are something that I haven't tried yet, but I'm pretty excited to give these a go. These are by RD Lures, and they've got some really interesting concepts coming out, but this is a super joint, like there's a few joins in there that really loosen this bait up, and it looks a lot like a gar in the water. And I've heard great reports on these things, but I'm yet to fish it. So um, at some stage I'm going to do a full review on this thing and get it out and give it plenty of time on the water. They use them offshore so they're super strong, but I reckon this thing on the flats is going to do some damage on big flathead as well. Another option is this Arashi Glide. And if you're looking for, these are really reasonably uh, priced for a glide bait and they've got a beautiful big mullet profile on them. These are Rushy Glides. I've tested these at after this year and I really like the action that you can get on these. You can fish them a little bit more aggressively than some of the glide baits that are in here. Some of them are a little bit temperamental at times, but this one tends to be a little bit easier just to retrieve back to your boat. Um, some of the problems with glide baits is that in high wind they struggle with your casting but also when there's tide they tend to fall about and uh, fall over themselves a little bit so I tend to use glide baits in those really calm conditions tidally but when you're in open flats where you're trying to have a big presence on those flats and pull up some big fish. This is probably one technique that I reckon is underused in the classic just going off the results and hearing what people have been using in years gone by. Fishing with really big diving lures across the flats, like things with a big presence, 
I reckon might just pull up some big fish or it might be a way to go. I've heard things from really top anglers that chase flathead all year round that they've used diving lures and caught some good fish, but I haven't seen them really rep yet. This is a specially designed lure that I got from um, Eric from Frequent Flash, and this is a 160 millimeter lure. You can see that profile there. He's got an amazing finish on the lures that he works on. And you can buy these directly from him, frequent flash lures, but something like that over the flats, just twitched and jerked around and given time to sit or float back to the surface, I reckon something like that's big enough to take a big fish out of its spot and pull it up to grab it. So I'm gonna be fishing with these. I've got, I've got them in three different depths, this particular lure. It's a big minnow presence, and it just represents a big mullet sitting on the flats. So that style of fishing, I think is probably underrated. And there's things like these rip stops. They come in two different depths. This is this one's like a 12 centimeter lure. So they've still got a really big bait that you're throwing around on flats. It's not a lot like the, you know, the smaller patterns that, of diving lures that tend to catch numbers of fish. These are after the bigger fish, I reckon. These rip stops are the way to go with the, sh they come in a shallow and a deeper version. And I like this deeper version. I'm even gonna use them for jacks too. So they've definitely got the componentry there to handle big flathead. For jacks, I upgrade it. But um, on the flats, you can see that color there. They've got a beautiful finish on them. And I'm gonna do some more work with these over the season, I'm sure. I'll do a full review chasing jacks with them because they're gonna pull some jacks as well. Here's another one from Frequent Flash. That's like a small, like a pilchard pattern. And you can see the finish there. They're, just, they're second to none. For a handcrafted timber lure, boy, he does a good job. So something like that in clear water for jacks or for, for big flathead. Definitely gonna give those a go. And I've left these to last because these are definitely the most exciting category of lures to throw for big flathead. These are the surface lures. If you've followed me over the last couple of months, you'll know that I'm all about throwing these big surface lures, especially the crossfire lures for big flathead. So I'll just show you a couple of the rigging options here that you've got. Uh, they come they come standard with, um, some of them have got like red hooks on the end. I've swapped them out because I've found that they can sort of blunt up a little bit after a fair bit of use. So I've put on these really big hooks on the back and then I've even run like a swinging treble. And you can see that there, that's just like 40 pound fluorocarbon that swings around at the back. And the reason I'm toying with all of these hooking systems is because the hookup rate for big flathead with these is really frustrating at times, but they tend to pull the giants. So I still fish them. I'm definitely going to throw these in the classic 100%. But um, even big assist hook setups for these big crossfire lures, they're the way to go. So there's a couple of my favourite colours. You can see some of the hook rash there. They've caught fish. They've caught plenty of fish, these things. And they pick, pick the really big fish, the, the big, the giant crocs, they love them. And uh, until you've fished with them and, and, and persisted and got the action right, you just you don't you don't understand how crazy the, the action is and the kind of fight that you get from a giant when you hook one of these things on these. So that's something um, I've captured some of the most amazing footage in my DVD, my la latest DVD, Giant Flooded in the Shallows, with these crossfires. And uh, if you haven't seen that, you've got to check it out. I know I've said it already in this video, but um, yeah, you're not going to see any more crazy crazy footage than what I've got in there. Um, and it was taken with these crossfires. There's you know, five, six giant flathead pulled on these things in there. All right, the other options you've got, it's not just the crossfires, although in my opinion, they stand way out in front of most of the other gear for surface lures for flathead. The other things um, are just like these big top water walkers, like a Rashi do one. Rapala have got this big walk and roll, and they've also got this rattling top water. It's a V-skitter. You can see the appeal there. It looks just like a, uh, just like a whiting or a, a profile of a mullet on the surface. And so I'm going to be giving these a go over the season. Uh, whether they get a run in the classic or not, I'm not so sure because I haven't tested them out yet. Some of these have only just sort of hit the market. These max wraps, um, but I'm definitely going to be fishing these as other options to find out how they go over the flats over the season. All right, we're there. 
Uh, the Classic's only like two days away now. I'm super excited. There's all the lures, or pretty close to everything that I'm going to have in my, in my boat for the couple of days. My brother Ben's fishing it with me, and we're going to test heaps of lures and uh, make sure we enjoy ourselves out there for the three days of the Classic. Hopefully we can get onto a big one. Um, I dropped a giant there on Friday, so hopefully that, that one's still there and I can get a crack at it. Now before I wrap this up, if you've been watching my last couple of videos chasing big flathead and you're shaking your head because of the net that I've been running, it's like my little kayak fishing net. I've gone out and just bought an Enviro net. These are a Shimano Enviro net and um, my old Enviro net fell apart after like 15 years of running it, an old green one. So I've finally gone and got a proper net for the Classic so I don't drop those big fish like I did in my last video and hopefully that's going to be um, filled with a giant's head in the next couple of days. So there it is, that's uh, basically all the lures that I've got to show you. Um, if you've got any questions make sure you throw some comments down below and I'll get back to you with any questions you got if there's some lures that you love that I haven't talked about in here or you reckon I've missed and you want to let me know so I can go out and get them before the classic and give them a run make sure you let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video hopefully holding the giant in the classic